the historic Ed Sullivan Theater on Broadway, we are proud to present the best of Broadway from the Ed Sullivan Show, featuring many of the musical theater's most treasured moments. There's no people like show people. They smile when they are lost. Yesterday they told you you would not go far. That night you opened, and there you are. Next day on your dressing room, they found a star. Sullivan took great joy in bringing onto his stage America's favorite Broadway shows and their stars. One of Ed's special delights was to introduce the latest smash musicals and the show's gifted songwriters. Hello, I'm John Raitt, and it's my pleasure to transport you back to the golden era of Broadway. It was my good fortune to first gain public attention in Rodgers and Hammerstein's Carousel. But it was their first collaboration, Oklahoma, that set the standard for the modern musical theater. Now Oklahoma celebrates a half century of popularity, and it is still revered as a perfect blend of song, story, and dance. From the moment the curtain went up at the St. James Theater in 1943, Oklahoma was a critical and popular success. Although it began its long run in the midst of World War II, it captivated the nation and went on to become an international smash. In 1955, Richard Rogers appeared on The Sullivan Show to conduct the orchestra. I was asked to perform the title song along with an all-star cast. Sure smells sweet when the wind 
to sing one of the songs that stopped the show cold on opening night back in March, that long, long ago March, Celeste Holm. Celeste Holm created the role of Ada Annie in the original Broadway production of Oklahoma. of not knowing what to do. I know what's right and wrong since I've been ten. I heard a lot of stories and I reckon they are true about how girls are put upon by men. I know I mustn't fall into the pit. But when I'm with a feller, I forget. I'm just a girl who can't say no. I'm in a terrible fix. I always say, come on, let's go. Just when I ought to say next. When a person tries to kiss a girl, I know she ought to give face a smack but as soon as someone kisses me I somehow sort of want to kiss him back I'm just a fool when lights are low I can't be prissy and quaint I ain't the type that can faint you gonna do? Supposing that he says that your lips are like cherries or roses or berries. What you gonna do? Supposing that he says that you're sweeter and cream and he's gotta have cream or die. What you gonna do when he talks that way? Spit in his eye. I'm just a girl who can't say no. Can't seem to say it at all. I hate to disappoint a bow when he is paying a call. For a while I act refined and cool. I sat on the velveteen settee. Then I think of that old golden rule and do for him what he would do for me. But other girls ain't having any fun. Every time I lose a wrestling match, I get a funny feeling that I won. Though I can feel the undertow, I never make a complaint. Till it's too late for restraint. And then when I want to... Can't. I can't. You know, and I'm going to ask you a question. It's probably going to sound very silly to you, but I swear everybody in the audience has it in mind, and I know I'd don't like Don't ask it. I know what, what you're going to ask. No, you don't. Which comes first? That is right. The well, lyrics or the melody? <laughs> in our case, um, Dick and I sometimes write the lyrics first. I write the lyrics and sets the music to them, and very often he writes a melody first, and I said, where's the melody? In 1958, Rodgers and Hammerstein struck gold again with another collaboration, Flower Drum Song. 
This time, they chose as their setting San Francisco's Chinatown, and they enlisted as director one of the stage and screen's foremost talents, Gene Kelly. The show introduced a newcomer named Pat Suzuki, who played the role of Linda Lowe. Girl, and by me, that's only great. I am proud that my silhouette is curvy, that I walk with a sweet and girlish gait. With my hips kind of swivelly and swervy, I adore being dressed in something frilly. When my date comes to get me at my place, out I go with my Joe or John or Billy, like a filly who is ready for the race. Gentlemen Prefer Blondes captured America's attention from the moment Anita Luce's novel reached bookstores in 1925. The show's lead performer, Carol Channing, became famous when the musical was a Broadway smash in 1949. Julie Stein's imaginative musical score propelled the show to its success. And in time, the original cast album was also a tremendous seller. Later, a motion picture version was developed for Jane Russell and America's most preferred blonde, Marilyn Monroe. On Broadway, Carol Channing was hailed as the funniest female to grace a stage since Fanny Bryce and Bee Lily. A kiss on the hand may be quite continental, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. A kiss may be grand, but it won't pay the rental on your humble flat or help you at the automat. Men grow cold as girls grow old, and we all lose our charms in the end. But square cut or pear shape, these rocks don't lose their shape. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Come a time when a lass needs a lawyer, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. There may come a time when a hard-boiled employer thinks you're awful nice, but get that ice or else no dice. He's your guy when stocks go high, but beware when they start to descend. It's then that those louses go back to their spouses. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. This is to start you on the right track.
It's not compensation. It's self-preservation. Diamonds are a girl's best. I don't mean rhinestone. Just looking at this program here with Rex Harris and Julie on the, the cover of it. It was presented for the first time on March 15, 1956 at the Mark Hellinger Theater in New York, produced by Herman Levin and directed by Moss Hart. And that particular March 15th always is going to be an historic date in, uh, in show business. Well, actually, Ed, March has always been a particularly lucky month for us. Mm -hmm. uh, both Brigadoon and My Fair Lady opened in March. You know, my Fair Lady Forever Will Endure in stage history is one of the classics of show business. Based on George Bernard Shaw's play, Pygmalion, My Fair Lady took the theater world by storm. Overnight, a superstar was born in the person of Julie Andrews, who played the role of Eliza Doodle. Ow! 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 Well, shouldn't you stand up, gentlemen? We got a bloomin' Addis in our midst. <laughs> Wouldn't you be looking for a good butler, Eliza? <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's rather dull in town. I think I'll take me to Paris. Mm, the missus wants to open up the carcel in Capri. Mm, me doctor recommends a quiet summer by the sea.
After My Fair Lady, the most successful musical to hit the Great White Way was undoubtedly West Side Story, directed and choreographed by Jerome Robbins and featured an unforgettable score by Leonard Bernstein. Stephen Sondheim wrote the lyrics for this, his first of many Broadway hits. It was set on Manhattan's West Side, where Puerto Rican and Anglo gangs, the Sharks and the Jets, were known to square off. West Side Story was a modern retelling of the classic Romeo and Juliet tale. The musical gave rise to a remarkable cast album which sold millions of copies and also became a motion picture that starred Natalie Wood and Richard Beamer. West Side Story is considered one of the major breakthroughs in the evolution of the American musical theater. The show centers around the relationship of two star-crossed lovers Tony and Maria, played here by Larry Kurt and Carol Lawrence. No, just for a minute. A minute is not enough. But for an hour, then. I cannot. Then I'm coming up. Oh, no, please. You're like them, afraid. Afraid? Imagine. Being afraid. You see? I see you. See only me. Lerner and Lowe followed My Fair Lady with Camelot. The show was a favorite of the Kennedy White House and Camelot's memorable refrain for one brief shining moment was forever associated with John Kennedy's tenure as president. Now, I'm thinking of Broadway shows, Alan and Fritz, and obviously, in every show there are, inevitably, there are problems. Now, what were the problems that the two of you faced in Camelot? Well, the great challenge, Ed, was to bring a show to Broadway to follow My Fair Lady. Right. Uh, we knew, of course, that the audiences would be comparing them. But we also knew that no matter what the audience had on its mind, the business of the play was to make them forget everything but Camelot. Now, here's one of the greatest thrills we've ever had on our stage. The famous Welsh motion picture and Shakespearean star Richard Burton as King Arthur and lovely Julie Andrews as Guinevere. One of the many amusing numbers in Camelot comes to life when they query, what do the simple folk do? What do the simple folk do to help them escape when they're blue? The shepherd who is ailing, the milkmaid who is glum, the cobbler who is wailing from nailing his thumb. When they're beset and besieged, the folk not noblessly obliged, however do they manage to shed their weary lot? Oh, what? Do simple folk do? We do not. I have been informed by those who know them well. They find relief in quite a clever way. When they're sorely pressed, they whistle for a spell. And whistling seems to brighten up their day. And that's what simple folk do. So they say. They whistle. So they say. <laughs> 
What else do the simple folk do to perk up the heart and get through? The wee folk and the grown folk wander to and fro. Have ways no to their own folk we slow folk don't know. When all the doldrums begin, what keeps each of them in his skin? What ancient native custom provides the needed glow? Once upon the road, I came upon a lad singing in a voice three times his size. When I asked him why, he told me he was sad, and singing always made his spirits rise. And that's what simple folk do, I surmise. They sing. I surmise. Arise, my love, arise, my love, Apollo's lighting the skies, my love, the meadows shine with columbine, and daffodils blossom away. Your Venus call to one and all, come taste in life while you may. The world is bright and all is right, and life is merry and gay. <laughs> what else do the simple folk do? They must have a system or two. They obviously are shyness at turning tears to mirth. Have tricks a royal highness is minus from birth. What then, I wonder, do they to chase all the goblins away? They have some tribal sorcery you haven't mentioned yet. Oh, what do simple folk do to forget? Often I am told they dance a fiery dance and whirl till they're completely uncontrolled. Soon the mind is blank and all are in a trance, a violent trance astounding to behold. And that's what simple folk do. So I'm told. They sit around and wonder what royal folk would do, and that's what simple folk do. Oh, no, really? I have it on the best authority. Yes, yes that's what simple folk do. After conquering Broadway with their Stop the World, I Want to Get Off, Leslie Brickus and Anthony Newley re-teamed for the roar of the grease paint, The Smell of the Crowd. One of the reasons for the show's popularity on Broadway was producer David Merrick's decision to have the show's co-creator, Anthony Newley, star in the musical. Roar of the Grease Paint's success was triggered by the chart-topping hit, Who Can I Turn To? Now, currently at the Schubert Theater here in New York, Newley and Cyril Richard are jamming the men at his new show, The Roar, The Grease Paint, The Smell of the Crowd, in which Newley plays the classic role of the little man who's always being imposed upon by the establishment. Plus, have a fine welcome to a fine artist. Who can I turn to when nobody knows? My heart wants to know, and so I must go where destiny leads me. With no star to guide me, and no one beside me. 
I'll go on my way and after the day the darkness will hide me Maybe tomorrow I'll find what I'm after I'll throw off my sorrow beg, steal or borrow my share of laughter With you I could learn With you on a new day But who can I tend to if you turn no eye? With no star to guide me And no one beside me I'll go on my way and after the day the darkness will hide me and maybe tomorrow I'll find what I'm after I'll throw off my sorrow beg, steal or borrow my share of laughter with you I could learn to with you on a new day But who can I attempt to give you time? Maybe tomorrow I'll find what I'm after I'll throw off my sorrow Beg, steal or borrow my share of laughter With you I could learn to With you on a new day But who can I tell? Great star goes off stage. I'd like to introduce out of the audience the producer of his Roar of the Grease Paint and also the producer of Hello Dolly, David Merritt. Oh, Where God. is David? Oh. Oh, David Merritt. Oh. <laughs> One of the biggest hits of the mid 60s was Man of La Mancha. It told the story of the windmill charging Don Quixote and his faithful companion Sancho Panza. Excellent reviews and great word of mouth made it the hottest ticket on Broadway. Audiences were captivated by Tony Award-winning actor Richard Kiley's unforgettable rendition of one of America's best loved songs. To dream the impossible dream To fight the unbeatable foe To burn Unbearable sorrow to run where the brave dare not go, to right the unrightable wrong, to love the honor and chase from afar, to try when your arms are too. The unreachable star This is my quest To follow that star No matter how hopeless No matter how far To fight for the right Without question or point To be willing to march into hell For a heavenly cause And my Let 
to my rest And the world will be better for this That one man scorned and covered with scars Still strong with his last ounce of courage In 1966, The Great White Way welcomed another hit musical, Sweet Charity, based on the Fellini film, Knights of Gabiria. It was choreographed by a young Bob Fosse and starred his multi-talented wife, Gwen Verdon. Master playwright, Neil Simon, adapted the work for the stage and reset it in New York. But it was Fosse's staging and Verdon's dancing that most electrified audiences. Now, down through the years, I really aged considerably trying to lasso Gwen for our show. But tonight's the night with Gwen doing I'm a Brass Band. Let's have a wonderful salute here for a great star. Someone loves me. Someone loves me. <laughs> Loves me, my heart is beating so fast. All kinds of music is pouring out of me. Somebody loves me at last. Now I'm a brass band, I'm a harpsichord, I'm a clarinet, I'm the Philadelphia Orchestra, I'm the modern jazz quartet. I'm the band from Macy's Big Parade of Wild Count Basie Blast. I'm the bells of St. Peter's in Rome. I'm tissue paper on a comb. And all kinds of music is pouring out of me because somebody loves me at last. I'm a brass.
delighted that you've enjoyed the show. And now we're all going to sign off and say good night. Look for The Best of Broadway, Volume 2, which will feature more classic moments from your favorite Broadway musical. And here's a taste of what you can look forward to. Paul Lynn and cast singing the hymn to Ed Sullivan from Bye Bye Birdie. The cast of Hair singing the 60s anthem Aquarius. Grace Kelly giving a French lesson in good news. Goulet singing If Ever I Would Leave You from Camelot. Liza Minnelli doing Sing Happy from Flora, the Red Menace. The entire cast of Oliver singing Lionel Bart's classic I'd Do Anything For You. Joel Gray giving his regards to Broadway from the musical George M. Buell Brenner in The Unforgettable King and I. Julie Andrews singing Show Me from My Fair Lady. Herschel Bernardi's masterful performance from Zorba. Cap Calloway doing Ain't Necessarily So from Porgy and Bess. Ethel Merman in an unforgettable moment from Gypsy. Shirley Jones singing You'll Never Walk Alone from Carousel. My co-star Janice Page's rendition of Fernando's Hideaway from The Pajama Game. Melba Moore's Tony-winning performance from Pearly. Louis Armstrong's inimitable Hello, Dolly. And yours truly doing one of my favorites, If I Loved You, from Carousel. Until next time, this is John Raitt wishing you all the best.